All right, I'm going to dress this up a little more and then create a preset that I can use anytime I want. If I zoom in here, see I've added a keyframe for frequency of zero right before the frame where I crank up the frequency to the value that I want. This is so I can place this anywhere in the timeline and have it be off and then turn on at that point in time. Now because After Effects and this effect generally create one ring at time zero anyway, I'm also going to animate the opacity of the stroke so that opacity turns on here and then starts with zero opacity. So when it generates that first ring at the beginning of the timeline, we won't see it because it will be invisible. So that's a little bit of a workaround. If I zoom out now, take a look. Sometimes when you change the keyframes, you'll see you'll end up with a different number of rings. And this can vary just based on what frame you're on. If I want to adjust that a little bit, I can take the frequency, move it out, try to get uh, the right number of rings or the number of rings I think ought to be generated during that time period. I think I'm going to play around with this a little bit more anyway. I'm going to hit UU to show all the different channels. Now you see the animation of the opacity is being displayed. One thing that might be interesting is go ahead and have the ant the opacity fade out so that each ring is a little more dim. So we have this kind of burst that has its own fall off within it. If we go in and change the keyframes for the frequency, we could have frequency fall off too. So if we go in, select those and turn the toggle hold off on them. Looks like I one was off and it turned on on. Now it's turning them all off. And that is going to affect the number of rings we get. So we have a couple choices. We could make this a longer effect or we could just go to that frequency. If I boost this frequency up instead of like just doing it at about six, crank this up to like 17 or something like that, then it's going to generate more waves and so we can see those falling off and have something a little different going on. All right. I think I'd also like to decrease the lifespan so that they start to die sooner. Uh, right now I have the lifespan set at 5.3. Might have them actually die before they get to the end there. But if I have a lifespan of 4.5 and they start fading out five seconds before the end, that's something I might want to decrease so that they're only fading out for um, here it's at 1.2. Because if we look at this burst, it comes out bright, the frequency falls off, the opacity falls off, and the whole thing kind of dies out towards the end. One other thing to, to play with, just because it's an option you have, I'm going to display the masks. I have a mask for this layer. I have masking the mask set to none so that it's not actually masking, but I'm going to use this as my shape. That's one of the options we have here. So I'm going to go in and select. Instead of a polygon, we want to use a mask. Now I have to select the mask, and it looks like um, 
I had previously done that. So now you see we have effect that has a shape to it. Okay, so I'm going to turn this into a preset that I can use anytime I want. To show that, see I have my effects and presets panel open over here. I select the layer that has the preset and I'm going to hit UU in quick succession to display all the parameters that I have changed from the default value. These are the things that I want to save. So I'm going to go through and make sure everything here that I've changed is selected. I changed the fade out time, start width, end width, expansion, frequency is animated, and there's also my mask. If you don't select the mask, you'll save a preset that uses a mask, but it won't have a mask. Uh, and then you can just create whatever mask you want. But I'm going to go ahead and save this mask with it. So I'm going to select it here. Well, this isn't the mask itself. This is saying that it's using the mask, and here is the mask. Okay, so now I have the mask selected. And now I'm going to save this as a preset. There are a few ways to do that. You can do it through the menu. There's a keyboard shortcut, I think. Uh, if you go into effects and presets, you can go into this menu here and do it. But we have this handy create new animation preset button here, just like you have in all panels uh, in Adobe products. So I'm going to click on that. And it should open up dialog. It's going to save this in the presets folder on my hard drive. I need a good name for this. If you don't remember the name, at least use a word that you would search for. So I'm going to call this a uh, pointy radio wave. Then if I'm just looking for radio or waves, I should see it. But if I remember pointy, I could go straight to it. That should work. I'll save that. And now it sh will show up over here, pointy radio wave. So what is the result of that? Well, one thing, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this layer that I've been working with. I just wanted to get rid of that. So here we've got some stuff happening. And let's say that right where this ring is fading out, I want my teardrop shape one to come in. Right, so I'm positioned in the timeline where I want that to be. I go over here, double click on pointy radio wave. It creates a new solid. We see my mask appear, and I can hide that. Just turn off the display. And there is my wave, right where I told it to be on the timeline. If I want another one, I would want to deselect this and then double click. If you have something selected, it will try to apply this to the selected layer. If there's no layer selected, it will create a solid to apply it to. All right, that is um, creating a preset of a customized radio wave.